What's happening, Wang? Chinese standoff. A film about a truck driver who gets sucked into some weird goings on in Chinatown. Come on, Dave, you must be doing something seriously wrong. And really, weird doesn't adequately describe a film with flying warriors, super old dudes with glowing eyes, and wall to wall fight scenes, which of course does sound like the police report on Auntie Beryl's last wedding reception. She can't get enough of me. Huh. He wishes. It's all fun and games until there's big trouble in Little China. Somebody, I don't care who, tell me what is going on. The truth? I can take it. Big Trouble in Little China was a 1986 film directed by John Carpenter. It's an action movie mixing martial arts, fantasy and comedy. It was also not successful at the box office on release, though it has since become a beloved cult classic. Also not successful at the box office, the movie version of my one-man stage production of 12 Angry Men. Critics called it overly conciliatory. I got a very positive attitude about this. Good, me too. Yeah. Jack Burton is a talkative truck driver, bending the ear of anybody who's listening over the CB radio. What do you say, Wang? In English? Something about beginner's luck. He wins a bet with his mate, Wang. But getting his money back will have to wait while Wang picks up his girlfriend, Miao Yin, from the airport. Also at the airport is lawyer Gracie Law, whose first interaction with Jack is what snipers in the Marines call a meat cute. Don't what? Lords of Death, street gang, punks from Chinatown. This isn't good. What are they doing here? Then things kick off. Some gang members end up kidnapping Miao Yin with Jack and Wang giving chase. Up until now we've had a simple buddy comedy movie, but that quickly becomes an action movie. And then it quickly changes into a martial arts movie, before quickly morphing into its final form, a fantasy movie. It just happens to mash together all those other elements that we mentioned previously. If Jack thought he was going to have a simple day driving his truck, he was very much barking up the wrong tree. Also barking up the wrong tree, a golden retriever trying to pee on a cactus. How can you tell from here? Things take a turn when the three elemental warriors show up. Thunder, rain and lightning. A fourth elemental, Wind, was on vacation visiting friends in Oklahoma. He says it was the storms, the three storms. Three guys did all that. The plot for Big Trouble in Little China is a little complicated, but basically it's a lot of very short scenes with a fair bit of exposition in between that turns into big action scenes before eventually there's a really big showdown, or in other words, Big Trouble in Little China. I just shoot the bastard. No, not until he's married. A big shot in Chinatown is the mythical David Lopan. Okay, we'll try and boil it down to salient points since the on-screen explanations hit you thick and fast, like trying to do jumping jacks under a ceiling fan. Basically, Lo Pan is a cursed spirit who's lived for thousands of years where he needs to first marry and then sacrifice a green-eyed girl. Wang's girlfriend, Miao Yin, fits the bill, which leads to Wang and Jack tracking her down. Total concentration. You ready, Jack? I was born ready. First, Jack pretends to be a John in a brothel with a hankering for a Chinese girl with green eyes. Yes, technically, Jack is already John, but here he's playing at being a John for the purposes of subterfuge, which of course leads to a fight. <laughs> then Wang and Jack find a business operating as a front for Lopan. You did that, right? I guess so. I hope so. And the pair are captured, where they meet the actual Lo Pan. Ancient and decrepit, but still spitting fire. I don't get this at all. I thought Lo Pan. Shut up, Mr. Burton. You are not brought upon this world to get it. Then there's another fight with his cronies. And in between all the fights, Jack and Gracie make eyes at each other while cracking jokes. And then there's some more exposition, and the Asian characters spend a lot of time reeling off pages and pages of dialogue to set the scene. Now from here on, it gets pretty normal. Officer's storeroom's a nice false front. <laughs> we may be trapped. The upshot is that Jack, for all his bravado, is clearly getting further out of his depth with each new bit of context. Safety! Oh, yeah. Gracie is captured, and since she also has green eyes, Lo Pan can now marry Gracie and Mao Yin, kill one of them, and have his way with the other. Lo Pan, which Lo Pan? Little old basket case on wheels or the 10 foot tall roadblock? One of the same person, Jack. Egg Shen was a tour guide who also has many hidden talents. It is he who guides Jack and Wang in their final assault on Lo Pan to prevent the combined marriage-slash-human-sacrifice ceremony. How are you gonna spring us? I have no idea. 
here's where we have a really massive assault. <laughs> with dozens of martial arts fights, monsters, floating nightmare fuel organic drones, and mystical warriors. If there was a kitchen sink in there somewhere, then I wouldn't be too surprised. The girls are saved, Lo Pan is defeated, and all's well that ends well. Except Jack and Gracie aren't gonna quite end up together, well, not just yet. Jack hits the open road, but this is a John Carpenter film. <laughs> Big Trouble in Little China. Well, it's a film I didn't love when I first saw it in the 80s. Or not even the second time decades later. But the third time, man, the third time I really enjoyed it. I put it down to just watching it when you're in the right mood for this sort of goofy action movie. Also, I've just found that I've appreciated John Carpenter movies so much more the older I get which means I'd probably need to be Lo Pan's age to appreciate Memoirs of an Invisible Man. This is just so shocking. I mean, I must just be so monumentally naive. You are. John Carpenter had made a name for himself as an eclectic director of low to lowish budget genre fare. Some science fiction, some action, some horror, some that mixed genres. Though his most financially successful films were in the horror genre. Hey, what more can a guy ask for? When Carpenter ventured into other genres, their profitability, or lack thereof, varied from project to project. Big Trouble in Little China would be one of his highest budgeted films of the 80s, which also meant that it had a lot more riding on it. So beggars can't be choosers. But I can! The film started with an original script by rookie screenwriters Gary Goldman and David Z. Weinstein, where their idea was originally a western set in the 19th century, mixing a cowboy hero with Chinese fantasy. The script was eventually bought by producers and ended up with 20th Century Fox, who liked the basic premise, but not the script. Screenplay work was then handed off to script doctor W.D. Richter, who'd recently directed the quirky 1984 film Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai. For his script, he'd more or less rewrite the film by updating the setting to contemporary times. This would lead to, the technical term is, argy bargy over the final screen credits, but that also wasn't all that unusual. We've got one of our best men inside right now, stirring the pot. Fox was keen to get the project moving and having it ready for release before Eddie Murphy's film The Golden Child was released. Golden Child also had Asian fantasy trappings. Now in hindsight, using the golden child as motivation for anything seems amusing. While the golden child was a massive hit at the time, it was also an incredibly poorly reviewed one with a reputation that has never recovered. The Golden Child was a film that even its star acknowledged was terrible. However, before Golden Child's release, Eddie Murphy was a huge star, especially after Beverly Hills Cop was such a huge success. And Fox wanted somebody with a bankable name to counter. Kurt Russell had already worked with Carpenter several times, but he was at first wary about taking on the role. <coughs> ah, shit! Of course, now you cannot see anyone else playing Jack Burton. He's a little full of himself, supremely confident in his abilities, yet somehow surprised when he constantly falls on his ass. Ah, you know what old Jack Burton always says at a time like this? Who? Jack Burton. Me. The secret to the character was that Carpenter knew that Burton thought of himself as the hero, though he was actually Wang's sidekick. Don't panic, it's only me, Gracie Law. Kim Cattrall was Gracie Law, somebody who was trying to shed light on the likes of Lo Pan. Gracie and Jack are made for each other, but also wired to snap at each other with witty repartee. And right in sure, but never with a person in your condition. Let's talk about my condition, just what's wrong with it. You should try standing down when where I am. It's Miller time. Kim Cattrall and Russell do have fantastic on-screen chemistry. Jack Burton was the guy on the poster, but this film was really about Dennis Dunn as Wang Chi getting his girlfriend back. That mad monarch who federated our seven warring states, defeated Lo Pan, and imposed upon him that, that horrible curse of no flesh and... Big Trouble in Little China, no surprise, had a mainly Asian cast. Anyone who was vaguely Asian who could do a convincing kick was in the film somewhere, in one of the film's many fight scenes. 
Victor Wong was Egg Shen, who would later return to film a prologue to set up the idea of the film. Model and occasional actress Susie Pai was Miao Yin, and James Hong stole any scene featuring a version of Lo Pan. A special kind of woman with dragon green eyes to make me whole again young again, that I may rule the universe from beyond this grave. James Hong has more screen credits than that guy Skip Intro. He seems to have worked on every single television series ever shown on a streaming platform. All right, what's going on, Wang? Why'd they steal your girl? Hey, you tell me. Big Trouble in Little China is a film that seems to be winking at the audience, inviting them in on the joke. It doesn't take itself too seriously. It's about a guy trying to make sense of a completely new world that suddenly opened up and hoping his street smarts and brute force will get him through the day. John Carpenter had wanted to make a martial arts film for a while, and with Big Trouble in Little China, he finally got his wish. There's a strand of Chinese fiction, Wu Xia, which is martial arts and chivalry, that's a major influence on Big Trouble in Little China, with warriors kicking the living shit out of each other. It's also a Hollywood film, so there are numerous gun battles, and then a massive fight involving, well, whatever you can find. I've found that whenever I've accidentally become embroiled in a massive martial arts street battle, that a winning strategy has always been to pour a bucket of marbles on the ground, just as an enemy combatant is charging you. Of course, this only works if the other side doesn't have the same idea. But if they did, you could always just suggest that you solve your differences by playing marbles. Exactly. It's real and we can touch it, so at least we know where we stand, huh? Yeah, deep shit. Big Trouble in Little China does not have a problem with going over the top. It's a film where realism gives way to ridiculousness faster than an Olympic sprinter trying to win gold by competing in the 100 meters in wet flip-flops. Part of what makes the film work are the special effects, which often come out of nowhere. You're in the midst of a gaggle of people fighting each other on the street, but suddenly you're getting blinding lights and electrical powers. John Carpenter at times wasn't happy with some of the effects. But I think on balance, they work quite well in the world created in the film. Big Trouble in Little China definitely was a film ahead of its time where it didn't find enough of an audience in theatres on release, but eventually found a very appreciative audience over the years, where it's been embraced on home video, television broadcasts, and now streaming. It's become one of those films that people love. That means diddly for the film's original backers. How do you think I feel, Jack? I lost the whole girl. And it meant that Carpenter didn't make similarly large films for a few years, where he would return for a time to ultra-low budget fare. John Carpenter was also well known for creating the soundtracks for most of his films. Here he collaborated with Alan Howarth and also used songs from his own band, The Coupe de Villes, which was Carpenter, Last Starfighter director Nick Castle and horror director Tommy Lee Wallace. Big Trouble in Little China was a good looking film with brighter lighting than usual for a John Carpenter film. The production design in the film is lovely with a suitable East Asian feel. Even for a movie that spends a lot of the time underground in tunnels and chambers, it's a film that has a rich texture. It's not really down and dirty most of the time. What does that say? Siu Sam Yi Yo. Hell the boiling oil. You're kidding. Yeah, I am. Just keep out. It's a good looking film with solid cinematography and editing. Its action scenes are very well choreographed. I'm a reasonable guy, but I've just experienced some very unreasonable things. Big Trouble in Little China abbreviates to BTILC, but that sounds like it'll take longer to say than Big Trouble in Little China. So we'll continue to say Big Trouble in Little China whenever we're referring to the film Big Trouble in Little China. It's all in the reflexes. It's an 80s film with snappy comedy, a hero who's not quite the hero, a situation where actors playing things large is not an impediment, a shit ton of action and martial arts combined with loads of special effects. It wasn't a combination that you saw often, and in hindsight, it wasn't a combination you saw often enough. Did you got any guns? Well, not against low pan, but here, here's one for you. Make you feel better, like Dirty Harry. The film's relative failure at the time of release didn't do Kurt Russell's star any harm, as he continued to just make good to decent films. Carpenter would also eventually get back to making some large-scale movies, with and without Russell's involvement. Though it would turn out that Big Trouble and Little China would finally be recognised as one of the pair's best team-ups. First time you ever plug somebody? It's like a really good sourdough. It just took a little longer than you would like. Come on, Jack, don't be afraid. Afraid? Are you kidding? <laughs> If you enjoyed this review, please like and subscribe, leave a comment below, or check out some of our other videos. Hmm, that is some damn good sourdough. The secret is...
to wait until it smells like gangrene.